All right, everyone, in this video, I am going to teach you how to identify the limiting and excess reactants or reagents for a stoichiometry problem. So I'm gonna teach you two different ways that you can identify the limiting and excess reactants. So this first way that we're gonna talk about is by calculating how much one reactant will react with the other reactant. And an example of when you would want to use this approach is if you have a question like this that says, what is the limiting reactant when 15.0 grams of C2H6 react with 50 grams of O2? So if you don't actually have to calculate how much of one of your products you're gonna end up with, this is probably the easiest way to calculate what is your limiting reactant and what is your excess reactant. So looking at what the problem gives us, we have 15.0 grams of C2H6. So let's write that under C2H6, 15.0 grams. And then the problem also gives us that we have 50.0 grams of O2. So 50.0 grams of O2. So Again, we're going to calculate how much of one reactant will react with the other reactant. So we could pick either one of these values. Let's just pick 15.0 grams of C2H6. And using that, we're gonna calculate how much oxygen would react if all 15 grams of C2H6 were to react. So to do that, we are going to do a mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problem, which will take three conversion factors, or three steps, as I like to consider this type of problem. So I'm gonna put my three fraction bars with parentheses, showing that I'm multiplying each one. And that's gonna get us to a mass of O2. Again, we're calculating how much O2 will react if all 15 grams of C2H6 react. So for our first step, for our first conversion factor, since we're starting with grams of C2H6, we wanna get rid of that unit. So grams of C2H6 is gonna go on the bottom, and we can turn that into moles of C2H6. So for the sake of time, I have the molar masses already calculated. This first molar mass is up in the top right up here. So the molar mass of C2H6 is 30.08 grams per mole. So that 30.08 is gonna go on the bottom of our conversion factor with grams, and one mole will go on top. And we're doing that so that grams of C2H6 cancels. And now we have moles of C2H6. So from here, we're gonna wanna get rid of moles of C2H6. And we can turn that into moles of O2. So for this conversion factor, we are going to need our coefficients or our mole ratios, they're also called. So for our balanced chemical equation, the coefficient in front of C2H6 is two, and the coefficient in front of O2 is seven. So it's a two to seven ratio, where our two is gonna go in front of moles of C2H6, and our seven is gonna go in front moles of O2. So for our units at this point, moles of C2H6 will cancel, and we have moles of O2. So for our last step, we're gonna get rid of those moles of O2 and turn them into what we want, which is grams of O2. So for that third conversion factor, we need the molar mass of O2. And again, that is calculated already up in the top right here. It's 32.00 grams per mole. So this time our grams are on top, so we'll have 32.00 grams of O2 on top and one mole of O2 on the bottom because it's 32 grams per mole for O2. And if you need help 
calculating the molar mass of these things on your own, I will put a link that should be popping up right now in the top right of the video that you can go watch that video if you want to have some more practice with calculating molar mass. Okay, so back to our problem. Moles of O2 are going to cancel, and that will leave us with the unit that we want, which is grams of O2. So now we just have to do the math here. So let's get our calculator. And we're going to start with 15.0. And we're going to multiply by our three conversion factors, which are fractions. So you're multiplying by the top and dividing by the bottom. And we're going to skip any ones because they're not going to change our answer. So we will start with dividing by 30.08. We're going to multiply by 7. We're going to divide by 2. And then multiply by 32.00. Hit enter and our calculator gives us 55.85 with some more digits past that. We could round to three significant figures so we get 55.9. So for our answer we have 50. 5.9. Now we did the math, so what's our limiting reactant? Well, there are two things that could have happened. Depending on how you did your math, one of these two bottom statements is true. For us, this first one is true, and I'll explain how. So we started with 15.0 grams of C2H6. So that means we're going to call C2H6 our reactant A. And we calculated how many grams of O2 would react with 15 grams of reactant A. So O2 is our reactant B. Now the statement down at the bottom reads, if reacting all of reactant A requires more of reactant B than is available, B is the limiting reactant. So reacting all 15 grams of A means we needed 55.9 grams of O2. But we only had 50.0 grams because that's what the problem gave us. So we needed more than we had. So B or O2 is our limiting reactant. And that would mean that C2H6 is our excess reactant. So we started with 15.0 grams of C2H6, but you could do it the other way. You could start with 50.0 grams of O2. So the other bit of information that the problem gave us. So let me run through that real quick. So if we started with 50.0 grams of O2, we would have three conversion factors three steps to calculate the mass of C2H6 that would be required to react with all that 50.0 grams of O2. So the stoichiometry here is going to be very similar to the problem we did above, but it's going to be opposite direction. So I can use all the same information but it will be opposite. So we'll have on the bottom of our first conversion factor, grams of O2, molar mass is 32.00, that's for one mole of O2. Our middle conversion factor will be the same except flipped, so we'll have moles of C2H6 on top, moles of O2 on the bottom, our coefficients will have seven on the bottom and we will have two on top. And then for our last conversion factor, we will have one mole of C2H6 on the bottom and 30.08 grams of C2H6 on top. All of our units cancel out. Grams of O2, grams of O2, moles of O2, moles of O2, moles of C2H6, moles of C2H6, and that leaves us with grams of C2H6. So now we can do the math for this problem. We're going to start with 50.0, multiply by the top, 
divide by the bottom of each conversion factor. So we're gonna divide by 32.00, multiply by two, divide by seven, multiply by 30.08, hit enter, and we get 13.428. Let's round that to say 13.4. So we would get 13.4 grams of C2H6. So in this problem, our reactants are switched in terms of A and B. O2 would be our A reactant, and C2H6 would be our B reactant. So if that was the case, and this is how we did the math, then the second of these two bottom statements would be true, where if reacting all of reactant A requires less of reactant B than is available, A is the limiting reactant. So we reacted all 50.0 grams of O2, our reactant A, and it required 13.4 grams of C2H6, our reactant B. Well, we have 15, which is more than 13.4. So we have more available than what we need. So that would mean the same thing, except here it's A is the limiting reactant, A being O2. And that's the same result we get from above. So you can do either one of those to get to the final answer of O2 being the limiting reactant and C2H6 being your excess reactant. Now, this problem is when you just need to identify which one's limiting and which one is excess. Commonly, problems won't just ask for the limiting reactant, though. They will also ask for how much of one of your products is produced. So if you have a problem like that, you're going to want to use this method. For this second method, we are going to use each reactant to calculate the amount of a product produced. So you might have a question that reads something like this, very similar to last question. How many grams of H2O will be produced from 15.0 grams of C2H6 reacting with 50.0 grams of O2? And what is the limiting reactant? So if you have a problem where you need to calculate how much of a product will be produced, you have to do two mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry problems. So unlike method one, you only had to do one of those, but here you're gonna have to do both. So we're gonna have to use the 15.0 grams of C2H6, and we're gonna also have to use the 50.0 grams of O2. So we're gonna set up two stoichiometry problems. So one with 15.0 grams of C2H6, and one with 50.0 grams of O2. They're both mass to mass, so three steps. That would be three conversion factors. So I'm gonna write each of those for both of these problems. And each of these stoichiometry problems will get us two grams of H2O. So we have our molar masses up in the top right. These are going to be very similar to like we've already done. So for our first problem, we need to get rid of grams of C2H6 and turn that into moles of C2H6. We use the molar mass for this first step of C2H6, which is 30.08. So that's 30.08 grams on the bottom and one mole on top. And that should get rid of grams of C2H6. Next, we have moles of C2H6 on the bottom, moles of H2O on top. Coefficients go into the second step. So we're gonna have a two in front of C2H6 and a six in front of H2O. So we have a two on bottom and a six on top, and that will cancel out moles of C2H6. And then our last step, we will get rid of moles of H2O and turn that into grams of H2O, which is what we are looking for. And we need the molar mass of H2O for this last step, which is 18.02 
grams per mole. So 18.02 grams goes on top and one mole on the bottom. Moles of H2O cancel out. And we can do the math for this stoichiometry problem. So we're gonna start with 15.0. We're gonna divide by 30.08. We're going to multiply by six, divide by two, and multiply by 18.02. Hit enter, and we get 26.958. Let's round that to 27.0. Okay, so that was our first stoichiometry problem. Now we need to do the second one. So we have 50 grams of O2 that we're starting with. So we're gonna get rid of grams of O2 and we can turn that into moles of O2. We need the molar mass of O2 and that is 32.00 grams per one mole. And that gets rid of grams of O2. Next step is our coefficients, where we're gonna have moles of O2 on the bottom, moles of H2O on top. And looking at our coefficients, we have six for H2O, and we have seven for O2. So seven is going to go on the bottom with moles of O2 and Six is gonna go on top with H2O. Our units of moles of O2 will cancel. And our third step here is gonna be exactly the same as above, because we're going to grams in, of H2O in both of these instances. So 18.02 grams of H2O over one mole of H2O. That was the molar mass of H2O. That's where we got those numbers. So moles of H2O will cancel out and we're left again with grams of H2O. So we can do the math for this problem, starting with 50.0. We're gonna divide by 32.00, multiply by six, divide by seven, and then multiply by 18.02. Hit enter and we get 24. 0.1339 with a couple other numbers past that. Let's round to 24.1. So 24.1 grams of H2O. Now for this problem, we wanna identify the limiting reactant and determine how many grams of H2O will be produced. Well, the rule for this is simple. The reactant that produces less product is your limiting reactant, and that's what you will produce. So we have 27 grams of H2O here and 24.1 grams of H2O. Which one is less? Well, 24.1 is less. So that means O2 is our limiting reactant because we calculated 24.1 using the 50.0 grams of O2. And then our excess reactant would be our other reactant, which is C2H6. So that is our excess reactant. And again, what would we get? We get the lesser of the two numbers. So 24.1 grams of H2O is what we would end up with. All right, there you have it two ways to identify the limiting and excess reactants. All right, if you wanna see another example, click in the top right. Please like this video if it helped you in any way. Feel free to look in the doobly-doo below for additional help and resources. Please subscribe and ring the bell to get notified for new videos. And thank you, thank you so much for watching.